Welcome to the, the Brooks Bros. Oh, just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You may be wondering how we became friends. Our friendship is all thanks to one person. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we are Mrs. Werner's only advisees. In an advisory of two people, you have two options, become friends or switch advisors. <laughs> it took a while for us to settle on option one. It was at the advisory barbecue freshman year where I first met Mrs. Werner and Allie. I looked around and saw a big advisory surrounding huge picnic blankets and started looking for my own. After circling every advisory, I found Allie and Mrs. Werner sitting on what looked like a welcome mat. Once Pre joined us, Ms. Werner told us that we should compare schedules to see if we had any classes together. Pre quickly responded with a, well, I'm taking all honors classes. <laughs> And that's when I decided I had to get out quick. <laughs> I still have no recollection of what was said, but I'm assuming what happened was that I saw a small white girl and I had to impress her with my course rigor. I think it was my insecurity on getting waitlisted at this school. I wanted her to, look, I wanted her to know that I would be the alpha advisee. <laughs> Little did I know, Allie was a small white genius. <laughs> threat to my own brownness. <laughs> but from then on, we had slowly built our forced friendship. Within the walls of Miss Werner's office, we had forced playdates every Friday, discussing our experiences in our classrooms, the dynamics on our teams, and being constantly reminded that we were Miss Werner's rock stars. <laughs> These playdates had formed Brooks's most exclusive squad. Mrs. Werner being our unspoken ringleader. But don't worry, <laughs> we keep her humble. <laughs> Mrs. Werner was our pal throughout high school. It was on her therapy couches where we discussed everything from the latest drama to turning her office into her own dorm room. After four years of forced playdates, we learned we could really talk to her about anything. When I found myself being laughed at by paramedics in the back of an ambulance, trying desperately to deflate an inflatable swan <laughs> before getting back to Brooks, somehow I knew Miss Werner would understand. <laughs> okay. Even though she couldn't remember our winter terms and doesn't always remember our birthdays, Mrs. Werner and our weird conversations on her therapy couches have been home to some of her favorite memories at Brooks. She's a hidden gem here for many reasons. You can tell her something and she'll respond without judgment or even share a funny story of her own. Plus, she has an uncanny resemblance to a certain celebrity. <laughs> After a freshman winter term at the two opposite spectrums of winter term offerings, me taking philanthropy and Allie doing stand-up, we decided to take the Vietnam experience class our sophomore year, even though most of her friends warned us it was too hard. The class itself is pretty interesting, but that's not exactly what made it memorable for us. Somehow with the most random group of students Brooks had to offer, we had the funniest experiences during that class, mainly during our DC trip. We got on the bus to the airport at 4.30 in the morning and started singing the chorus to the Naked Brothers band hit, Crazy Car, <laughs> much to Fahey and Mr. Packard's excitement. <laughs> By the time we made it to DC, Mr. Packard begged us to at least learn more lines of the song and stop repeating cray yay 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 car over and over. <laughs> but we knew he secretly enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, Gordon Graham, and I then climbed into Mr. Packard's car and made sure Gordon and Mr. Packard were up to date on all important pop culture occurrences, including Kim Kardashian, while also learning about how the Packards first met. 
There were multiple rough patches, but we made it fun. Allie and I decided to act as a group's tour guides, making sure to tell everyone when we passed the Eiffel Tower and the Hoover Dam and when we saw the Obamas in Buckingham Palace. These jokes made Mr. Packard, who takes his DC monuments very seriously, a little upset. <laughs> His attempts to rein us in only made it seem more funny to us, so we kept it going until we passed Pebble Beach on Great Pond Road as we made our way back from the airport. <laughs> we also enjoyed a nice dinner out at the Hard Rock Cafe. A huge group of nine-year-olds unfortunately had the same luxurious dining in mind for their field trip. So we spent our night being serenaded to the tune of Let It Go by little kids in fluorescent safety vests. <laughs> no surprise that since our year, the winter, the winter trim class has gone out to a nice steakhouse instead of the hard rock. <laughs> this experience of getting comfortable around Mr. Packard has allowed us to have our voices heard here. In the spring of last year, we went with Mr. Packard to discuss our thoughts on various rules and changes of the school. Although we weren't able to turn the place upside down, we did air our opinions and they were taken into account. After becoming best friends with Mr. Packard and Ms. Werner, we knew we couldn't stop there. <laughs> After all, the most important part of high school is networking. <laughs> it's easy to find a close group of friends that you're comfortable with and stop there, but push yourself to go beyond that. Don't limit yourself or cut yourself off from other people. How do you know you won't be friends with them if you don't get to know them? Everyone you meet knows something you don't. If you're really trying to make this the most meaningful education experience of your life, learn from every teacher you can find, not just those in classrooms. So talk and get to know people in different grades, from different places, with different ideas than you. You don't know when you'll uncover a hidden gem. Who knows, maybe you'll find your Mr. Packard and Mrs. Werner. While we're here, sometimes it's hard to think that one day we'll miss this place. But now that we're about to leave, it seems that all we want is more time. When you leave, you won't just miss the people and the place that you leave behind, but also the person you were at this time and in this place, because you'll never be exactly this way again. Make the most out of your time here. You don't need an excuse or a big event to have fun. One of the best nights we had this year was one where we didn't even go to the main weekend activity. We started off in Gardner, witnessing the latest additions to their ongoing pranks. The best and probably simplest one consisted of Catherine Von Stadi just walking into her own dorm room, which was apparently scary enough to cause Caroline O'Keefe and Kate Wilson to rip their landline out of the wall and sprint out the room. After some more pranks, we made our way to the Christmas tree lighting and sing along to the faculty kids' favorite carols. We then played June Lee and Jenga in the Packard's house to see who would get into Duke. We all lost. <laughs> this may not sound like an exciting night to you, and that's kind of the point. Even though it wasn't the most action-packed, we, we found a way to make it fun. Out of all the things we've learned here, I think that is one of the most important lessons. A lot of times underclassmen will ask, is that a fun dance or a good activity to go to? And here's the truth. Every activity and every dance can be fun if you decide to make it that way, whether it's an open house or even a semi. What do you want to do here? And why haven't you done it yet? Why are you scared? When is the last time you did something for the first time? Stop swallowing your words. Stop caring what other people think. Stop waiting for Saturday night or senior year. Be scared, and then do it anyway. This is your life, and you can do whatever you want with it. Don't waste your time here waiting to be yourself. You are you, and that is your power. Like Miss Perkins said, you are here to be you. Hidden gems don't have to be so hidden. To end this speech, we want to share with you our top 10 things you should do before you leave Brooks in honor of our mostly fake club, the Bucket List Club. <laughs> One, stay at the dining hall from when it opens to when it closes. Two, be brave and talk to Mr. Packard about the things you want to change about this school instead of complaining about them. Three, 
read Marty Graham's Call of Duty emails because they're the funniest things this school has to offer. <laughs> Run lines for the boys' varsity soccer games and make yourself feel like you're contributing to the team's success because one blood. <laughs> Five, flip the switch on the Christmas tree outside of the Packards. <laughs> try to make Mr. Pack, oh, six. Try to make Mr. Packard and the whole school join your fake club at the club fair. <laughs> Seven, go to a dance and really dance. Your dance moves might not be the best, but making a fool of yourself is more fun than standing in a circle. Eight, start a Snapchat group with random people from different grades and maybe name it Gang 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 or Sophix Place and see where it takes you. <laughs> Nine, send a lost email without apologizing for sending it. <laughs> Ten, give a senior speech, because why, why not? not? <laughs>